What's going on? Welcome to the video. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to record vocals in FL Studio. I'm gonna give you all the general setup and some tips and techniques that I like to do in order to make the workflow more efficient. So let's hop right in and get to it. All right, so first off here in FL Studio 24, the first thing you wanna do is come up here to options and select audio settings. And this is where you're going to kind of select your audio driver. So you can see right here that I have my USB interface driver selected. Um, but if you didn't want to use that, you could use FL Studio Osseo or Osseo for all. Below that, you have the sample rate in which you're going to record in. So I have mine set at 48,000. Um, a lot of people do 44,100. Some people go all the way up to 96,000. But it's really dependent on you know how much information you want to capture, how many samples. Um, I will say that you know the higher you go, you're obviously going to be taking up more memory. So if you don't have the hard drive space or the SSD space to you know, hold all this information, I would say stick at 48,000 or 44,100. The last setting that's gonna really directly impact your audio recording is gonna be the buffer length. So the buffer length is simply like how much time it's gonna take for your computer to process the audio and play it back in your headphones or on your speakers. So the lower that you have your buffer length set, the faster it's gonna play that back in your headphones. So there's not gonna be as much latency. So you do wanna set your buffer length as low as possible, but sometimes um, you'll start getting, you know, audio glitches and crackles and pops in your audio recording. And that means you've set your buffer length too low and your CPU can't handle it. So try to set your buffer length as low as possible without causing any type of distortion or glitches in your audio. And then once you have found your sweet spot for buffer length, as far as the recording process goes, um, you know, once you're done recording, then you can come back to the buffer length and raise it a little bit to take some CPU load off the computer while you're mixing. Now, there's a couple of different ways to set up your microphone within an audio track here in FL Studio. So my preferred method is just to find an empty track right here, right click, go over here to track mode, go to audio track, and then select an empty mixer track. So we'll just go ahead and select uh, mixer track number one. And now you can see that it brought up three little icons right here. So the first thing I like to do is select the middle icon and I like to turn the monitor external input off. Now, if you leave this on, you're gonna be able to hear yourself through your speakers or your headphones, whatever you're using to monitor your vocal or your microphone. Um, but for me, I don't actually like to hear myself through the headphones when I'm recording. So I always turn the monitoring off. And then up here at the top, you can see there's a few different settings to choose from as far as what you want to record. So I personally always use external input only, and that's only going to record my raw audio coming from my microphone. Phone. Now, if you have like plugins loaded on this mixer channel, you could select post effects, but keep in mind that's actually going to record with those effects already, you know, baked into the audio recording, right? So if you have auto tune or EQ, you're not going to be able to undo those settings once you record. So for me, that's why I always select external input only. And then the next thing you want to do is select your microphone input. So right here on the left icon, you just click this and my microphone is going into my first input. So I'm gonna select analog one. And now you can see right here, I'm talking and it's showing uh, my audio signal right here linked to this audio track. Now keep in mind, if I selected monitoring on, I would be hearing myself through my speakers if they were turned up, or I would be hearing myself through a pair of headphones if I had those plugged in. Now the last setting that you wanna make sure that you're aware of is this arm and disarm right here. So if you turn this off, you have disarmed your audio track for recording. So if you click record up here, you're not gonna record anything because you have to arm the track for recording. So make sure this little button right here is turned red. Now, a few other things that you do wanna be aware of is up here, you have the countdown before recording. So if you turn that on, it's gonna count down from three. So it's gonna go three, two, one, and then it's gonna record. And then over here to the left, you have your metronome. So, you know, obviously if you have trouble staying on beat, you could turn that on um, and that will give you a little assistance as far as the beats per minute. Um, but for me, I'm gonna turn that off. Now up top is the global record button. So all of the tracks that you have armed and ready to record, uh, once you click this button right here and you know press play, it's gonna be recording all of those. So that's like the trigger to start recording within FL Studio as a whole. Now, if you right click the record button, you can see right here that you can select what all you want to record. So I wanna record audio. Um, I wanna record any notes, like if I'm playing on a keyboard, any type of automation I'm doing with a controller. Um, I just have all of these selected and checked so that way when I do press record, I'm ready to record anything that I'm working on. Down 
down here under options, there are a few other uh, global record settings that you can set. You can see here that I have recording starts playback checked, disarm on stop and enable recording markers. I have all of those turned on. So now that we have everything set up, let's go ahead and press record and make sure that it's all working properly. Testing, testing, one, two, three. You can see that my voice is now coming into the computer through analog input number one and being recorded here in FL Studio. Okay, so when I was done recording, all I had to do was press the space bar and it stopped the recording and it stopped the playback. Now notice when I did stop the recording, it disarmed the global recording right here because again, I have the uh, disarm on stop selected. So it's going to auto disarm the global record button whenever I stop the playback. So it's up to you whether you wanna leave that turned on or off, it's all dependent on your workflow. A lot of times for me, whenever I'm done recording a take, I want to play it back and listen to it. So whenever I press play, I don't want to start the recording again, right? I want to just play back the audio when I press the space bar. So for me, that's why I have the disarm on stop selected. Now, a good workflow for me whenever I'm recording is I like to have the track that's underneath my microphone track to have all of my plugins and vocal chain kind of loaded so that way whenever I'm done recording a take, all I have to do is select by pressing the E on the keyboard, and then I'll click the track and I'll click shift down, and it's going to move my audio track to the track below. Now, in order for me to load my vocal chain on track number two, what I need to do is link track number two to a mixer track. So I'm gonna right click on track number two, come down here to track mode, audio track, and then I'm going to assign it to mixer track insert two. You can see that insert number one, it won't even let me select it because my microphone is already linked to that. So it's only going to allow you to link it to an open mixer track. And now you see that we have these three icons again. Now we're not gonna be recording audio on this track, so we don't need to even worry about you know, setting anything up here within the three settings. Now, what you do wanna worry about is what's going on with mixer track number two. So if you open up the mixer on insert number two, this is where you're gonna load your plugins, right? So if I wanted some auto tune, I could go ahead and load that. Um, and then I could load just a basic EQ. I could load a compressor. And you pretty much get the gist of it right here. So I load my vocal chain on mixer track number two. And that way, anytime I drag my audio track down from the microphone track onto mixer track number two, it's automatically gonna be routed here to the insert two where all of my plugins are. So the way to think about it is insert one right now is my microphone track. This is where I'm strictly recording all of my takes. And then insert number two is where I am actually processing the audio. Now by using this workflow, something else that is very beneficial beneficial to us is punching in and out. So now that we've drug our audio that we just recorded down to a separate track, we can now free up our space right here to kind of drag the playhead back and press record um, while this audio is playing, right? So we can kind of lead up to where we're actually going to record without recording over the audio. Let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna press record and it's actually gonna play my audio right here and then I can punch in right after the line is over and being recorded here in FL Studio. Test, test, you can see that my audio is coming through on microphone channel number one and we didn't record over the audio that is linked to mixer track number two. Okay, so now what I could do is just kind of tighten these audio tracks up and then again, I select E on the keyboard, select my track, shift down really fast. And now you can see that we've kind of punched in and out. And this is how you kind of build out your recording. Now, the last thing to mention is that if you did have the monitoring turned on and you wanted to hear yourself with like auto tune or some reverb, what you would do is on mixer track number one, you would load the plugins that you want to hear yourself going through, but you just want to make sure that you are recording the external input only. You don't want to um, select post effects and have that auto tune or that reverb baked into your recording. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the content. Please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and I'll see you on the next video.